Now, you should have all have received update number 804. And what I'd like to do today is to go through it and point out a particular theme which developed. And I'm not sure that it was actually intended that way. But it's interesting, once we go through it, we will see, I believe, what I'm talking about. The editorial by Eric Rank, titled The Next Level, just a quote from this editorial, he says, while the consequences for giving up on the attempt to win a video game are insignificant, the same cannot be said for the Christian way of life. If the obstacles that we face cause us to turn away from God and our commitment to Christian living, we are truly defeated. Giving up the way of Christian life ends in the end of life that can never begin again. And later on he says, a failure to make progress implies an unwillingness to earnestly continue in the way of righteousness with a dreadful result. Now we will see in a moment that the Q&A actually echoes these very statements. But before I go into that, I also like to address the current events and briefly quoting from parts of the introduction. We say in this issue we concentrate on events in and pertaining to the United States. We show beyond a reasonable doubt, a legal term, right? that the United States is at the brink of total destruction. It has reached the point of no return. And I mean this very, very seriously. It has reached the point of no return and is facing international turmoil and bankruptcy, as well as the external threat of a nuclear attack. The irony is that the United States leadership is not even considering and able to identify the future real enemy. At the same time, God has given the people of the United States and the UK the leadership they deserve. We have said this time and again in the church. A nation will have the leadership the nation deserves. We go on to say, after all, God holds the people accountable for their many sins and transgressions and their unwillingness to change and to turn back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We heard about the God of Abraham in the opening prayer, whom they have forgotten and whom they defy on a daily basis. Then we go on to say that in this context, we speak on the coming European superpower, and we conclude with articles showing the utmost confusion of Orthodox Christianity which doesn't seem to know anymore what and whom to believe. We especially address paganism and the curse and the demonical festival, quote unquote, of Halloween, showing why God is so angry and furious with our, quote unquote, Christian nations. Now, when we go through the current events, I just want to pick a few articles. Here is one by Zero Hedge dated October 30, which says, there has been something happening this month that very few people have noticed. It's been lost beneath all the other headline dominating news. In the months of October alone, the United States national debt has soared by nearly a quarter of a trillion dollars. This is pretty astonishing given that October is supposed to be a good month for the US Treasury Department. Yet despite being flush with tax revenues, the US government still managed to pile almost a quarter of a trillion dollars more on top of its already enormous mountain of debt. Now listen carefully what the article goes on to say. The only realistic way out of it is for the United States government to eventually default. This could mean selectively defaulting on holders of U.S. debt, for example, the Chinese, Japanese Federal Reserve, Social Security Trust Funds, etc. One day, Uncle Sam simply stops paying. Or it could mean defaulting on promises made to citizens, such as paying out Social Security benefits. Each of these scenarios has 
its own particular consequences, ranging from steep inflation to a full-blown global financial crisis. Financial experts pretty much agree that we are living in a bubble right now in the United States. The economy is superficially held back, held up. It's only a matter of time when it's going to collapse. Just about everybody knows that, those who look into the financial situation. We should be aware of that. Then we talk about the European superstate and express wrote on October 29 that Britain's exit from the European Union has accelerated plans within Brussels to form a giant superstate with its own army, currency, and of course they're talking about the euro, keeping the nations together, and shared rules as well as, don't notice, an EU chancellor, an EU chancellor. And it goes on to say, Joe Leinen, a German MEP, revealed this month the EU will form its army by offering to save countries money if they hand over part of the control of their military affairs. The MEP said the policy of national armies cannot continue for much longer. Here are our comments. There are more and more talks about creating an EU superstate, a European army, and now a chancellor for all of Europe. They are truly blind who cannot see that all of this is in line with biblical end time prophecy, which reveals the final and last European revival of the ancient Roman Empire. By the way, I found an interesting article this morning about the European configuration, comparing it with the, European, uh, uh, the Roman Empire. We'll have that next time. It is that power, it goes on to say here, which will ultimately destroy the United States and the UK, and both nations are totally ignorant about this prophesied future development. This is because God has given them the power of slumber. I hope that we don't have the power, or rather the spirit of, of slumber. Some who once knew have this spirit of slumber today. One article which I don't want to go into that much, just the headline, a court decision in the UK, you must not post your Christian views on Facebook. Now, if you want to know what that's all about, read that article. You must not post your Christian view on Facebook, unless you want to have repercussions. Q&A. The Q&A asks the question, what does the Bible mean when it speaks of eternal concepts and eternity? And so this Q&A goes into, first of all, the one aspect of those words. And the summary is, the concepts of forever, everlasting, eternal, are used in a synonymous way. So in other words, when the Bible talks about forever, it might as well talk about everlasting, it might as well talk about eternal, all means the same. It goes on to say, they confer the concept of without end. But then, the second part of this Q&A shows that these words can also have a different meaning, that they can mean that something will end. And in that context, we're talking about eternal judgment, eternal fire, eternal punishment, eternal destruction, that the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And so, we explain, of course, that this is not meaning without end. And here is the summary in this Q&A. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't read the Q&A, but I just want to give you the summary as to what it all means. The foregoing shows that the expressions eternal or eternity, when applied to God the Father and Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, Christians made immortal, angels and demons, do in fact describe an eternal, everlasting existence which will never end. On the other hand, those who have committed the unpardonable sin will be destroyed in the lake of fire. They will not be tormented forever in an eternal, never-ending hellfire. Rather, their existence will cease. 
even though they will be burned up in the quote-unquote everlasting and quote-unquote eternal Gehenna fire, which will burn for quote-unquote forever, these words do not mean here without end. But they describe a state of affairs which will endure as long as certain conditions prevail. Once the conditions do no longer exist, the quote-unquote eternal fire will cease to burn. At the same time, the eternal fire will have eternal or never-ending consequences for those human beings who will be thrown into it. Their punishment, not punishing, will be of eternal consequence as they will cease to exist and never come back to life. Remember what I just quoted to you from the editorial. Same thing. That's a warning. The warning not to fall away. In the work section, we first of all mentioned that a member letter for the October 2017 period has been written by the ministry, which features reports from our feast sites in the United States and Germany. Along with this letter, our newest booklet, How to Find the True Church of God, is included for those who have not received yet a copy. Then, of course, our new Standing Watch program was announced, Worshipping Satan on Halloween. Provocative title. Here's a summary. Most Brits don't believe anymore that they must refrain from worshipping idols or other gods. The Vatican is in uproar over the liberalism of Pope Francis. What do these developments have to do with Halloween? What's the origin of Halloween? Is there a connection between Halloween and All Hallows' Eve? Pope Gregory III tried to transform Halloween and evil practices were adopted by the Christian Church into a tradition called Souling. Now, if you've never heard of Souling, you should listen to the Standing Watch program. Very interesting what they came up with. The question we ask is, can you make something Christian, which is thoroughly satanic? A question we got to ask ourselves. And then we also point out here that several of our sermonettes and sermons given in the United States have been now posted as well, in addition to the ones which have already been posted, and I believe a few more will be posted, and then everything is going to be posted. I want to quickly go to the memo letter, which I believe most of you have received. It was basically drafted by Michael Link, thanks very much, but there were also reports included by Dave Harris from the feast site in the United States and Kaylin Mitchell from also the feast site in Germany. I'd like to quote in line with this theme, what we are saying. Are we living a life that is pleasing to God? Or do we let our struggles control us? Do we believe that God is working with us? Or do our struggles, problems, challenges, as well as our daily pleasures and priorities become more important to us than God? If we know that with God all things are possible, then why do we worry and doubt, become sad and depressed, and end up doing things we shouldn't be doing. Is this new life too difficult for us to handle? Or do we believe that our life was better before we began following the truth? Now, of course, these words were written because there are some who are struggling, who can't let go. They have problems which they thought they had overcome before they became baptized, but only to find out that those problems resurfaced. Addictions were never really overcome. They were just perhaps subdued for a while. And now they are in very grave danger. And so the question which is being asked here is, do you want to go back to your old life? Some have done that. Some undoubtedly will still do it. But the warning is, if those people did receive the Holy Spirit at one time and go back to what they came out of, and if they lose the Holy Spirit in the process, as we have just heard twice now, their life will end with no further chance of being 
brought back to life insofar as immortality is concerned. In the memo letter we go on to say, be and stay strong, brethren, because the time is near. The world moves towards utter destruction. This country moves towards utter destruction. As we said earlier, I mean, you've got to be blind. You've got to be absolutely, completely, totally blind, not to see how close we are to complete and total utter destruction. I mean, if you can't see that, I don't know what else we can say. We go on to say, this is Satan's world, not God's. But God has called us out of this world and sanctified us to be different. Are we different? Not just in not participating in certain worldly holidays, not just in worshiping God on certain holy days, but what about our daily lives? Do we show that we are different in the way we live? We have a lot to say about this in the sermon. But these are questions we should ask ourselves. When people look at us, do they see Jesus Christ in us? Or do they see somebody or something else? Music